Good morning, guys. How's it going, YouTube? How's it going, my followers? Those that are following me, thank you. So, what we got here is uh, a lot of port work. So, that's what I'm going to be fixing. Uh, basically, I'm going to get this truck going uh, back to stock. I don't have uh, too much room on this uh, card. So, I'm going to have to go back and uh, clear out my uh, SD card and make some, uh, I'll make some room so I can do some videos for you guys we'll add to this. But basically, this is going to be uh, letting you guys know what's going on with this truck. So, what we got here is these fenders have been um, modified for a bag truck. Um, they didn't do such a good work. Uh, you see all the welds right there. Uh, so I'm going to take this hood off. And this hood, um, it's going to take the uh, 13, 13 millimeter right here socket. And so it depends on how you want to do. You want to take the hood off, or you can take these bolts off here. I recommend just taking the ones off here, which is, you can see it back right here, there's a bolt, my finger right, right in this area right here. Take that bolt off, because I'm going to replace the fenders, so. Um, in this situation, I'm going to probably just take, take, um, take these off. Because I need to remove the hood, so depends on what situation you're in. You want to take off. I'm just going to take the three bolts off here. Take and remove the hood because it is heavy. I'm going to do it by myself. I mean, it's not that heavy, but it's awkward. But um, remove that. And then I'm going to start with the fenders because these have some 26 inch wheels on it. Um, and as you can see, they were hitting the fenders, tearing it up. Um, so they access those bolts for that fender. They're gonna be right in here in the door, which is uh, there's one right there as you can see, right there, and another one right there. So that would be the ones in the door. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm going to go ahead and replace the fenders. Of course, the lights are gonna get replaced. I'm gonna keep the grill. Um, going to paint match that possibly. I'm not gonna keep it chrome. I think this was someone spray painted it. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take off that, or I'll find a black one. Let's see if I can go ahead and restore that one. If not, then I'll replace that as well. But I do have another bumper. So the bumper, I'm going to go ahead and uh, replace the bumper and fender this fender as well the passenger fender as well the hood is in good shape uh, I think I'm probably gonna go with a different a different hood but the fin the hoods decent so I mean I can use that for now so basically it's just to uh, keep costs down and um, show you what's going on so basically this is a, some repairs uh, fun I can't functionally use the hood right without removing this pan that they did and then I removed that pan uh, that they had here the fender well that was here the metal one that they replaced and as you can see look what they did here <clears throat> they caved that in to make the room and that's not the right way to do it you want to cut that out replace it and weld it in but yeah anyways it is what it is but basically I'm just gonna get it running back to the way it was stock and uh, she's bouncing everywhere I got suspension problems uh, both shocks are loose they're not even bolted in right um, the spring is just sitting there bouncing around um, see what else it, it's gonna need leaves in the back because they put airbags and then they remove the airbag. Um, 
Let me put some. Let's see if I can open this. <laughs> see, look at they put springs. I don't know why they just, just didn't. Live. Maybe the bags were no good and they couldn't afford to uh, replace the airbags. Anyways, it's all Mickey Mouse. But just want to get it back running on the road. I got rid of, got took out the 26 inch wheels that were there. I think they were the snowflake black ones. Um, I don't mind it stock. Basically, I just use it as a daily for now. Like I talked about before. Yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the this. Um, give me another SD card or clear one out, and then so that I can go ahead and show you guys um, the work that I'm doing. And you guys can learn and see what I'm, you know, what it takes or how to do it. If you've seen it already, then you guys already know how to do it. You, you guys that um, are familiar with it already but those that don't know I'm going to go ahead and show you guys you new guys that have never worked on cars you can do it um, see, I think that's about it for now um, as you can see like they drilled the holes there for the master on the um, clutch master cylinder I don't know what they were doing I had to replace this um yeah so i got some work coming anyway so i'll get back to you guys see you guys in a bit uh thanks Bye. <sighs> i did it again i couldn't wait <laughs> sorry guys i got a phone call and then i was making the starting the video and uh, put the camera down and then start going at it you didn't get started you just don't want to stop uh so we got talk to you guys about some of the bolts there these are uh 15 millimeter bolts you want to break those loose first so 9902 they have this style bumper so these fit in there you got the ones here, the ones down here, so there's four in the front, and then you got one on each side on this arm that bolts on the back of this this frame behind this uh, radiator support uh, frame mount right here. There's a bracket that goes behind there. There's two bolts there, so just unbolt this here, and then the bumper will come off. So like I said, these are people, this is for those that don't know, uh, get yourself uh, some type of power tool. These don't work all the time in certain situations, but they make it easier in some uh, tight places. You got to still go with the manual um, and everything else The for the fenders. So we got a 13 here, 13 here. We got two 13s here on the side. Um, and then you got a 13 here on the radio support here. And you got one on the top of the radio support. So there's two in the front. And then um, there's more on this fender well, on the factory fender well. But the way they had it, they didn't have it all, all bolted down or anything. It doesn't even have the plastic piece for the fender well. Because there's a plastic unit that, that, sits, that sits in. There's a plastic piece that just sits into it and that holds it onto the fender. And then there's the factory um, battery tray right there. Uh, see on this side, this side's pretty simple. Same thing here on the top. Um, one down here. The two here on this side, the two up here. It's identical. So as you can see, look at what they did. It's <clears throat> all so messed up. Okay, so then this is even loose. Check this out. It's wobbly. Can even tighten it down. It's Mickey Mouse. Um, the grill. Let's hold it with a bunch of screws. So I don't know. I'm gonna see. I mean, if I get the right clips on there, it should work. 
they just put a bunch of screws in there. So, I don't know. I'll see if I can make it work. If not, I'm going to get another one. And like I said, the hood's good. I got two other fenders. The lights are falling apart. I don't know why they spend so much money on LED lights when they're just junk. Makes no sense. So better just keep factory. Yep, that's about it. Um, otherwise, just the hood. The uh, bolts for the hood. But this is how it looks right now. Oh, you probably look better. Got the springs they did. See, like their springs not even in the right spot. I don't know what they were thinking right there. So I might have to change. Might have to just go ahead and, and this looks like an aftermarket upper control arm. Might have to just go ahead and change that lower control arm. Um, might have some springs, some lower springs. I don't even think those are the right springs to this truck. And the shocks are not even on right. They're just dangling it. Yeah, and just moving around. They're not even on. So this truck just bounced around everywhere. Tempted to pull that motor, but yeah, I don't want to do that yet. So, kind of want to, but then I'll be here for a while soon with another truck to get apart. So, I don't want to do that yet. But, anyways, yeah, look at this side. <laughs> All right, guys, sometimes try to take the time to do it right. All right, you guys have a good one. morning guys how's it going YouTube okay so back on the uh, MBS project don't know what it's gonna be yet uh, so far I'm just gonna use it as a daily so a little bit of an update I took apart the whole front end pretty much the whole clip replaced the, the fenders with some used fenders on a marketplace got this other one in on the passenger side didn't fit that quite that great but it's good for now it's uh it wasn't cracked down here like the other one um it's okay because i'm not sure if i'm going to go with this front end or with the cat eye i do have the bumper for it 05 bumper it's like 0506 bumper and it's the uh, sierra bumper that drops down uh, you can put the hd piece that goes in the center there between the, the grill and the bumper so what we got going on here is just simple stuff uh, for the newbies okay uh, you guys jack these trucks up be careful you know they're small uh, any vehicle you want to be careful with um, find a good solid point where you're going to be able to lift it uh, in my case, my driveway slopes, so I put some uh, pieces of wood back there so if it rolls, slow it down. Um, and on this truck, the frame in the front sits down really low and not really a good spot to put the jack. On my MBS, I could put it right in the front and I have no problems on the MBS. So, I don't. Mm, some guys do it, but I think just like that that kind of this piece here kind of at an angle. So I'd rather not put the jack. And uh, with these springs, the truck's pretty low already. The amount of stock truck could be higher, but since it's got the suspension's got on it right now, it sits low. Um, so, anyways, um, if you want to get an impact, you can use one of these old star. You don't have impact, you use one of these, break those loose. The end of the impact, and then go ahead and use it. I don't have a, an impact like that one. Uh, I have a power tool, but I don't have an impact, so it's just fine. I'm good with this. Um, so you just uh, loosen the bolts. Make sure the tire's sitting down first onto the ground before you, you crack the. You're gonna uh, loosen the bolts first, just uh, either with this, and crack them loose. the wheels off make sure these are loose before jacking up the car even further yeah I'm gonna go very basic on these uh, 
videos for the newbies. I know you guys that, that are already familiar with this stuff, it's easy, but this is for the younger crowd. If someone doesn't know anything about cars, uh, I want them to get an idea of what to do. So I don't have the original bolts because this had a, you know, it had that 24, ever. I thought they were 26 or 24 wheels. So these are 16 and it had these star, uh, not star, but spikes in the front. And so I took spikes off and I had some uh, locks, regular bolts sitting around. Now this is what I had, so that's what I'm using. Um, so you get these loose and then from there you go ahead and take the wheel off. Um, but you want to jack it up where you need it. Uh, right now I got everything, everything loose and then I'm going to go ahead and jack it up before I completely take off the wheel I got picked up. So just in case, you know, it slips on you, the jack slips on you, it doesn't fall on just the, on the, on the brakes. The suspension, so. I got a small jack down there for, uh, just in case it slips off the jack. The frame slips off the jack. So now I got the wheel in the position where you see it's off the ground. You can't tell it's off the ground. Spin it, you know, see this loose. You can't tell. Or just look under there, crawl under there. Look under there. So right now, you don't want to crawl in there yet until you, you put a jack because you don't want to depend on the jack stick. On um, the jack itself, you want to put a jack stick. So. And uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to look. When you're working on cars, you have to investigate. You have to figure out what the problem is. Um, it's just uh, as a you, mechanics, what they uh, they have to inspect everything. You got to check out everything. some things you can't see or hear. Some things things are not notable. They're not noticeable. So. <clears throat> I'll put it right there, right there. I just don't trust that area there. It's, it's too rounded out. I want something a flat surface, so that's pretty flat. I'm gonna go ahead and jack it up a little bit. Right now, this is unsafe because you're relying on the jack itself. As you can see my jack. See right there how it's kind of going sideways? It's dangerous. It's because of the slope I got. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put this there, and then I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and let the jack point. Give me a minute, guys. Reposition the jack. See it right there. Right now it's just sitting on the little jack. It's very unsafe. Give me a minute, guys. You see all that airbag suspension in. So I'm basically investigating everything, all the damage that was done to it, uh, sloppy work that was done.
don't eat this too hot, so just need to get it. Hold on, give me a minute. Just sitting in the corner. Because the truck is sitting at an angle. Cut the slip. So, wait a minute. Okay, sitting right here. Pretty good right there, solid. It's flat. This jack is a lot stronger. This is a 610 jack. I'm gonna go ahead and put this pin in there. So I won't give those. That doesn't have the pin anymore. Those are old jacks. I lost the pins on those. They still work, but it's best to have the safety pins on them. Just like that. Okay, so I want to see what they did here. So I'm going to leave the jack there and you guys feel that it's comfortable, you know, I feel like the, the truck is going to be supported. Kind of move the truck around. Um, make sure it's not going to fall on me. Kind of move it around. So the jack supported down there. And so is the uh, check stand. So <clears throat> it's bouncing around. And I was trying to figure out well, what they do to this thing. So I don't know if these are the original springs. Uh, looks like they replaced this upper control arm with the aftermarket that I can see. Look at right here, they over, they over tighten it. See, actually making it bend. Um, this is just dangling. This is supposed to be supported. Uh, something, I don't know. Well, oh no, I guess that's the way it's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to have, yeah, right here, I think it's supposed to be like a clip to hold on to the, the original. But uh, this is fine, I can get away with this, but I think it's right here. underneath the lower control arm because you're going to have tension from the spring and what you want to do is push it up so you can relieve the tension off of your outer tie rod and the lower bolt to the knuckle and this one uh, let me put this stuff on here it wasn't it wasn't that tight it was just they put it on it wasn't too tight it was just already on there um, on this case, on this one, on this bolt, sometimes the bolt tends to want to stay, and then the um, the uh, not tie rod, but the ball joint here on the lower control arm tends to spin, and it'll turn with the nut with the bolt. The nut will turn with the bolt. So, if that ever happens to you, what I do. Is you can use a impact gun and it should pull it out faster or what you can do is you can go back and forth 
and I just use this and I just went forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, and little by little start to work its way because you're throwing it forward and back and little by little start to get down to where you need it and then this will stop spinning and then it'll come out. So that's a little bit of a trick that you can do on that is just go back and forth with the bolt, go forward and back, forward and back, forward and it'll start to work its way down. So that's a trick you can do. Um, sometimes that happens to these as well. Uh, you can do the same method or use, uh, try to get something in here to hold this or use this right here to hold. Uh, you can get a, a tool to hold this, like a, one, one of these wrenches to hold this so it fits. Or use a, a vice grip, hold that, and then get that bolt to where you need it to get the threads down. And you get into that situation. So in this case, these ones are moving. So I'm using this, this right here. I'll only use this because it was handy. That's right. But I believe this is a 15. You use a 15 socket or um, a wrench like this. And uh, need to loosen the one up here on the the knuckle. When I say knuckle. This is considered a knuckle. This whole unit right here. Let me see if I can back up. See my finger. This whole unit is a knuckle. Mogoy sells a knuckle. It's a two-inch drop knuckle. So you guys might be familiar with that. Uh, if you don't, they sell a knuckle. Mogoy sells a knuckle. Uh, it, it's positioned uh, where the wheel's at. It's positioned, I believe, it's positioned upper. It's higher, so it makes the truck sit lower. Um, I don't know if this is an aftermarket. To me, I think this is. I think this is the stock one, but I'll find out as I take it off. See if it has a name or anything on there. So, gotta get this off. This bolt here, and bolt here, and I show you what it is. Uh, give me a minute. Okay, so I got a eight millimeter here. So that could work for you guys. Put that on there. Um, and then you can use one of these open uh, wrench, a crescent wrench. You use a adjustable crescent wrench and get that off. Isn't hurt. I I know these are like. It's probably like the cheapest tool you can use, but it's working. So do what you gotta do if you can't. And like I said, find the right size. I believe this is a 17, but uh, I don't have time to search for it. I'm just using this for now. It's coming loose. If it wasn't, then I would use the proper one. So give me a minute. Okay, check this out. So I used a pry bar. Just started working on it, lifting it up, see if it'll give. They put some cheap welds on here. So whoever weld this on, they put this this plate here so the airbag can sit on. And they weld it to the factory load control arm. This is not even a aftermarket. This is a stock control arm. And they look like they just tack weld certain areas. Of it. Back here seems a little stronger, so I'm gonna have to do some cutting and grinding. But I'm gonna try to work on the rest of it get off. And what they did they tried to make the shock work onto this. They drilled holes on this and tried to make the shock work on this plate that was here. The plate's not even in the right position for that shock. Um, they kind of just Mickey Mouse to put it together so it could function. It wasn't going to function correctly. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, guys, look. Check this out. Cut it out. The walls were, were a little stronger back here. And uh, that's fine. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be fine. So the welds were a little strong, stronger back there. So I had to cut it. Worked away back here with the blade. I cut on top of the plate. And cut on top of the plate so I can get down sliced into the top of the plate that was here sitting like that work my way touch the weld here with the weak in the weld and 
pop it with a crowbar, clean it up a little bit. Now I'm able to put this shot back into its stock location, which is right here. So I was able to save this for now. Uh, the thing is, the idea is to save money. Uh, it's a project, so the idea is to uh, try to use what you got and save money so that something that you need that's more important, you can put your money towards that. And that's the idea of what I do. Um, basically, uh, it is what it is, and you got to work around what's going on with it and figure a way, cheaper way to get things done and so that you can use your money wisely because uh, parts, things ain't cheap nowadays, man. So uh, if you can get away with it a little longer, that's fine. Now I understand if it's a safety issue, then yeah, you got to replace it. So this looks like this is a stock knuckle. And you can see how that looks at that position. This whole unit is a stock knuckle. And then this here is your bearing, which is held by three bolts. Uh, these three bolts here hold the bearing. So these vehicles have the bearing. This whole unit right has these uh, threads to hold your wheels, these studs. Those are connected to the bearing. And then you got your uh, your uh, caliper that's here, and then you got your uh, disc brakes right here. Okay, so. That's a whole nother story, but anyways, I was able to get away with that. Um, and I'm gonna use these lowering springs. These were on another project I had, and I saved them. These are the ones that were on this truck. They look almost similar. But honestly, I believe the ones that went to this truck are longer. On the stock ones, they're longer. I think. They could have cut this, or this could be an aftermarket spring, or it could be something else. I don't know what it is, but I do know this came out of a 1500 uh, truck, 1500 truck, and it was lowered, and it was a single cap. So I know these will work. So I'm just gonna use those. I'm not gonna worry about them. All right, guys. See you in a bit. Yeah, I'm on the passenger side now. So, we already talked about the other side. It's the same situation here. The spring, the shock. Hang on. And they put this plate here for the airbag. They didn't even bother trying to put it on here. <laughs> what they did, but this guy's ready to come out. There's no tension. On a stock spring, shock, it, um, stock screen it'd be bigger it'd have more tension so when you're doing this kind of work um, you want to be careful with the spring I'm pretty sure you guys heard it before if you haven't I'm letting you guys know and also like I said um, we're starting fresh you guys didn't basically don't know anything about cars or don't even have an idea so this is why I'm going through this most videos I see they kind of cut through that and just, they expect you to know but um, yeah, when you're working on this, there is going to be a lot of tension because of that spring. It's a lot taller and a lot stronger than what's here. This is probably a lowering spring or it's probably a spring that came off another vehicle. I don't know what that came off of, so that's I'm not going to use that. Um, it's possibly, it could be a lowering spring for a 1500. I'll find out later, but I'm going to use what I have. So on the other one, on the other side, on the driver's side, what I did is I took the, I lower, I took this bolt off I didn't you don't need to um, it's sometimes I forget and so anyways you don't need to so I'm letting you know on this video you don't need to it's this guy here you need to take off and that's gonna open it up this one you can just let it fall and play dangle um, as for the tie rod here which is connected to your uh, racket pinion um, this is the one you want to loosen so that it can move around and get you some room. Um, get your, if you need to, unplug your your line, your brake line. Uh, if you're afraid it's going to mess up or anything, it should be fine. Um, just, you know, if it has a lot of tension, just raise the jack up so you can get the spring in there. Since we're going with the, don't need to lower the, the lower control arm. This is a lower control arm if you guys don't know. This bottom one here is a low control arm. This upper one is 
a upper control arm. Um, in here, there is the ball joints that are pressed in onto this arm. So right, this unit here is a pressed on pressed in ball joint, and then it has a fitting to allow you to put your grease in. Um, it's the same thing on the bottom. Here, you have another lower ball joint on your lower control arm. It's very simple, makes sense. I mean, lower, upper. Um, and then here, you got your your keys for when you get. Um, it has an adjustments inside here uh, so when you get it aligned you take it to the alignment shop they are able to align it here and they're able to um, adjust your toe with, with your outer tie rods and so on and so on so that gets more complicated but you have an idea of what the parts you have that you're working on and basically this is to teach you guys to work on your own trucks um, like I said, I'm going to say it again. These are for those guys that don't know. These are rookie guys that just already bought themselves a fresh car. It's their first vehicle. Um, there's the young kids out there. Uh, this is just basically to teach them. And there's adults. Adults that don't know. They've never worked on a car before. Um, it's basically common sense stuff. You just, you know, right from wrong. Um, and you figure out the parts and what they are and go on from there. Um, as for this, is your caliper, it's both right here. Um, this is your uh, disc brakes, your disc brakes here. This comes off. If I take the caliper off, this will come out and then you can replace these. These tend to need to be turned um, depending on the thickness. Now, if you guys don't know, the thickness of this um, rotor basically depends on the thickness of here if you're able to use this if it's legally you can use it and i mean there's probably guys that use them beyond the legal amount but if you go to a shop they will not turn this for you meaning turning they'll put it on a machine and it has a blade which will cut this and it's set like kind of like on a record player but if you don't know what a record player is ask your grandfather or your dad <laughs> but what it'll do is it's a sharp point it will cut slowly and all the way gradually up to this point you see they're gonna they're gonna cut from here all the way back or then cut from here go down you don't want to do that you can replace the whole thing that's gonna cost you probably 160 dollars maybe 200 dollars to replace just this part so if you can turn it cost you maybe 10 20 bucks get it turned save you some money um, when you have the money you can replace it so the idea is to use what you got um, and to save money so that you can put money on something that you actually need more important and to get you by for now. Um, now if you're doing suspension work and you're going to have a lower truck, it's going to come. What's going to come with that is you're going to have to have upgrades. You can get away with some things, maybe change the springs, change the knuckle. I explained to you what the knuckle was. This is this whole unit here. Um, you unbolt this this the lower control arm and that whole knuckle will come out and it comes out with the bearing the bearing is set back here which is bolted onto this piece here and that pretty much covers the suspension here at this point you got your shock you got your spring um, and that's pretty much it from this point in the front suspension uh, we're not working on the rear so I'm not going to explain that right now and when I come to that point on, on the job I will do that um, and I'm basically sharing you sharing to you guys what I'm doing on my truck right now the, basically the, the issues that I've got so this is a daily vehicle it's going to be a daily vehicle for now but it's this is all going to run on anything that you guys work on um, out there and um, on an, it, it applies to other vehicles as well it may not may be the same it's a little different but it pretty much applies to mostly all trucks some cars some are different um, cars are set up a little different but it almost all applies the same but anyways yeah so this is what I'm dealing with and I just wanted to explain some of the stuff to you guys as I'm doing this the other side I finished it up um, basically after um, I was changed the pieces I cut this out and replaced this I cleaned that up and then I Put a new shot a new spring and use a 
original shock that was on there. So I'm probably gonna use that one. It worked, it's good. Later on, I can replace the shocks with some new ones when I need to. Um, the springs that I put in there, they're lowering springs. So they should work with those shocks. If they were stock shocks, they might sit a little higher, a bit too, too much tension, so you wanna use a different shock. Those, I believe those are lowering shocks. So we're fine right there. And basically lowering shocks, the stock shocks, it's the distance from the top to the bottom. And it's basically the, the plate it has when it's going up and down. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, but, uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, so when I put it back together, basically I put the spring in since it was loose, it's a, it's a lowering shock. It's not as high as a stock shock. So there's not a lot of tension. Basically using the jack to lift, push everything up apply the bolts put the bolt here raise it up and i'm going to show you on this one let me get to that point and i'll continue the video okay so i got the nut loose drop it down it's about a couple of threads this one's already loose In a little bit, it's gonna hit that a little bit. See if it'll go on its own. It doesn't. Uh, it should drop when that one comes out. Hopefully, sometimes it gets stuck. Speed on the side a little bit. Just give it something to want to come down. Um, the jack. I'm gonna loosen the jack a little bit so that it can have some room to fall. And you have the jack there, the spring won't pop out because it's holding the pressure. And by hitting this, it's going to release the pressure. And then it should drop to the point where the nut's on. Okay. see it pop and dropped so it dropped right onto that nut now there's a lot of tension on that nut now because all the weights here and it might not look heavy it is um let me see this one this one didn't want to come out so let me see I'll raise it up You don't want to beat on this part. You can dent into the foot. You could put a two by four so it'll protect it. It's really in there. I think I can get away without using that, getting that out. So let's just jack this up. I'm going to take the bolt off. And now release it. Okay, see the see the line, it's stretched up line. So that's gonna have some tension. So just jack it back up. Hey guys, I'm back. Oh, just realized I gotta charge this uh, GoPro. Anyways, uh, putting this um, Sierra bumper. This is a 2001, so I believe that's a 2005, 2006 bumper. Uh, I'm gonna add that to the truck. All right, here we go. There it is. I'm most likely gonna cut this off and then drill a hole here and mount that there but i'll get right back to you i'm going to put this back on the charger give me a minute hey guys how's it going back again uh update on the gmc uh there's the bumper 
got the nose job done. Um, I still got to finish getting a couple more bolts on there, but I mean, it's there, it's secure. The reason I haven't done it because um, I didn't have the lights and then the grill, I might replace that grill. Um, that grill needs some, the grill needs some work on that one right there. And, uh, it's a little flimsy on this one here. And then uh, they put some screws on it. Uh, some just some uh, regular uh, soft tapping screws, sheep screws. Uh, well, um, probably I think they're like um, drywall sheet screws or for just um, uh, two inch screws that you probably put in a wall. Uh, for four by four or two by four or something like that as you can see we did that there and mickey mouse and all that stuff anyways um well this video is an unboxing so i got me some oem lights i didn't go i didn't go with the uh blacked out lights there we go and um i'm here in fresno um you guys here here locally fresno in the area of um in the valley in Fresno, California. Uh, there's a place, um, it's on Avenue Street. Um, and I purchased these there. The place is called Total Parts in Fresno. So there you go. There's the address. The best price is in there, and I agree. Um, it's a little bit of a hard place to find. Uh, was for me at first, but you just go right down there. You'll see it. Um, they have their big old sign there. And uh, you can look them up. And they're right on Blackstone. Let's see. That's the phone number. Let it focus. Okay. Um, pick these up for 60 bucks. Not bad for OEM ones. Uh, you got custom ones there. A little bit more pricey. Cat Eyes. The guy told me it was $70 for cat eyes. I mean, it's hard to find cat eye ones if you're... I got a GMC, but I mean, if I had a cat eye, if I changed this one, I would go there definitely to get some. Um, I'm going to bring these guys along and um, hopefully get together with them. I'm going to uh, get together with them and make a video at their shop and show you guys what they have there. And this is all about cars. Um uh, basically this is all DIY stuff you do it yourself and uh, basically um, videos that will be learning how to work on your own car and do it yourself and I'm here to help you guys out whatever I can do for you guys um, whatever I know I'm gonna share it with you guys and like I said that's this is my project this is gonna be my daily project and I got my OBS over there um, um, which is going to be the burnout truck but for now um, I just want to show you this video is basically the unboxing for the lights they look good I mean good quality man can't be for the price you can't find prices like this anymore and then uh, you got your corners right there clear in the box I mean, they also have the custom ones, like you know, the blacked out ones, or the ones with the halos and different, different LEDs and stuff like that. Or they have those as well. And they also have other parts like grills. I believe they have bumpers and grills. A lot of other parts there. What I'm gonna do is, uh, like I said, I'm gonna make a video over there and then share that with you guys a little bit more. So this is basically um, showing you the unboxing for this. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and install these. Um, I don't have the camera set up, but you know what? Give me a minute. I'm going to see if I can set this camera up so you guys can see me install them. They're not hard. They're very easy. All right. Give me a minute. All right. So there we go. Mm. Right now I'm out and there's a lot of mosquitoes, so... Got the fan blowing, so kind of get rid of some of them. 
Um, so these wires they put in, they all messed up over there. So I'm not to fix that. But they put an LED light in there as well. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to use that. We're gonna go with the OEM ones. And then um, this frame here put a lot of screws in it. Look at it. Yeah, so anyways, yeah, so here's the lights corner. This one. And here's the other one. Look at the quality of it. They're really good. I was gonna go with the clear on the I was gonna go with the clear on these uh, corners here. Um, but I kinda like the the OEM ones. I was gonna go with the OEM uh, top headlights, but they did have the white ones where this is white and clear. I didn't care for them. I actually like these better. Um, if I want to go with something more drastic than I will, but this is good for now. Better than it was on there. Okay. All right, guys. Kind of put something together to hold the GoPro. So I need to give me a tripod. But give me a minute. pattern just twist it it's on and this goes right in here this will fall into this little bracket just like that it's right for the headlight I'll just put that in there just like that so that'll slide in here go into the little slot and then this little clip here so you push right in that's it, that's it. Check it out. For the headlight. Right. Headlight pretty easy. Um, this has they put the LED lights on. Let me give me a minute. Let me see what they had on there. Oh, I know what they had on. Okay. What I'm going to do for now, I'm not going to put the headlights 
the bulbs in. I'll do that later. I'm just going to put the lights in. I'll put the bulbs in later. I'm actually just going to install this. So what you would do is just put your bulb in here. Put your bulb on your, your regular bulb and then put your high beam bulb in. Which I'm not going to do that right now. So I'm just going to load the wires like that. So basically just get installing how to install this part. This black piece here, this frame, is going to fit into these, these two areas here. keys each light has two so it's gonna go in just like this and you're gonna it's gonna fall right into that square piece in that spot Got a better bite than doing that one first. Do the second one. Work it back and forth. There it goes. Promise it. I'm going to do the same this one. bulbs the bulbs I have are the um, LED bulbs and I'm not going to use the LED bulbs Just start with the corner first. 
team right into a spot and just put a corner drop on the Give me a minute, I'll put the grill on and I'll show you the, the after the after clip. Okay? Give me a minute. bumper fits you guys are on our marketplace double check your stuff before you buy it um, this one was good it went in no problems no issues 
I just fought with the passenger side one, so I might still replace that one. Um, as you can tell, it kind of has a little bit of a flare here. Um, if not, if I can get it right, then I'll, I'll just use it. Um, and then the bumper. On the bumper, it has some dings here. I didn't realize it. Right here. But that's okay. I'll take care of that. I'll pull those out and then kind of push it in right in here. Here. A little bit right here. So I'll go ahead and take that out. I'm going to sand down that chrome anyway. Uh, sand it down. Throw some primer on there. I'm going to paint it black. So that's going to be black. Also, on the last video I was making, and I skipped it, um, I was talking about probably going with the SS clone. But I'm thinking about making it a, I don't think anyone done it. Probably they haven't thought about it. Or whatever. I'm thinking about also possibly making this one, if I can find a bed, a step side bed. And I'm thinking about making it a clone of the Project Torque uh, Mama Lona, which is uh, the OBS, I mean not the OBS, the, um, the OG for the um, Project Torque. Um, and I was thinking about making it a clone. When I first found Project Torque, uh, the YouTuber, uh, Freddy, um, I started watching him when he first came out with um, his brother-in-law. And I was I searched on YouTube for uh, a black front end for GMC, and that's how I found, because um, I had a four-door GMC and I wanted to see how the front end looked black and that was a project that I first started before I started my YouTube channel and I wanted to see how the truck would look black and I just Google I just searched it on YouTube you know on search on there and um, I ran into Freddie's uh, channel and he had his GMC that was black and so I seen how the paint was on his front end he had the the grill and the bumper he had just started his channel just started his channel i mean he only had about probably like five videos on there it was a couple random ones and then um the first one that got me was the one when he was changing the tire um with his brother-in-law and then he dropped the wheel and so uh, from that point i started watching the channel and uh, but i'm thinking possibly making this truck an OG identical to uh, Project Torque uh, Freddy's pickup truck the Sierra um, and it's funny because not that long ago he made a video and he was explaining that his truck and no one really knew that it was a V6 to begin with and this one's a V6 but this is a manual um, I'm thinking about making this in a manual because I want that five speed for my OBS truck so it's possibly possible that I might pull the automatic that I have out of my OBS truck because like I told you guys in my last video that one was it was a 50 50 chance it was going to work or not that transmission works excellent so I'm thinking about putting that one in here and take that five speed out and put it in, into my OBS and making this a 5.3 I have the 5.3 here I have a 6.0 here but this one was already sold to a buddy of mine and if he doesn't want it ends up uh, wanting to get rid of it I'm just probably gonna buy it back from him because I sold it to him I maybe put that 6.0 in um, this one but I was thinking about making this one a uh, clone of the OG on Project Torque uh, channel uh, do everything possible that looks like it with the wheels and um, also, also thinking about probably hitting him up for some wheels he, um, I kind of like the original wheels he had when he first started his channel I, be, I believe there were some Sierra wheels but ones he, that they supposedly got scratched I don't know if they got scratched or didn't get scratched I wasn't sure about that but maybe those are maybe going with the ones he has now I just can't think of the name right now. I hear it all the time. Um, those ones are a little pricey, but I don't know. we'll see. I don't know. That bed's kind of iffy too as well. 
don't know if I'll find a good one. They're they're up there in the price, and um, I might make it a step side and go that route, and then just to have it look like that um, OG truck. So we'll see. So it'll be the project, the project torque clone, <laughs> if you want to call it the project torque clone OG. So it'll be the OG project torque clone. And um, I'm here in Cali, so that'll be cool to be driving around this. And uh, people might think it's his truck, but it'll just basically be a daily. There you go. There's the front clip I wanted to show you guys. So far, I got the new lights. Those are I pay 60 bucks for the lights. Actually, I pay like 50 bucks for the lights because the guy gave me a discount. Um, and I'm gonna put it in the video where uh, I got him from here in uh, Fresno, and you guys go hit him up. Good price. He's got other things as well as grills and tail lights and uh, bumpers and. It's got the um, like the bottom lights there as well, the fog lights. Um, so you guys can hit him up. And I'm also probably thinking about doing a giveaway. Uh, probably buying a set of lights, um, probably the cat eye lights, and do a giveaway on that uh, to my subscribers. So pretty much all you got to do is subscribe, comment, like, and subscribe, and share to a friend my channel. And um, I believe I'm gonna do like 200 people and then give those away and I might possibly do the scanner because the, the scanner um, was a little pricey so I want to probably go with a higher number but maybe like a thousand subscribers or maybe two thousand subscribers and then I'll give that away and like I said that's gonna be free no cost to you I just need your information which would be like um, who the subscriber who you who you guys as a subscriber are um and you share and you comment and you like and that's pretty much it you just got to do those things and you'll be in the giveaway and then later on i will do a merch giveaway where you purchase merch and i'll do a giveaway um and i'm going to surprise you on those things they're going to be things that will benefit you guys in the long run uh, something to help you out on your guys' built so that's that's the clue i'm going to give you something that's going to help you guys out on your build uh, so keep it in the tr in the truck scene. So uh, my giveaway is going to pretty much help you build your vehicle, either as a truck or OBS. Right now I'm not doing any cars, but it would basically be the OBS 9906 and the um, the MBS 9906 and the OBS from 89 to uh, 98, I believe it stopped, or somewhere 99. But anyways. Yeah, <clears throat> mouth a little dry. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but yeah, I just want to show you guys an update on the daily, and later on, I'll show you some more things I've going. Um, things I fixed on it. I can show you guys real quick right now. I did the front. Uh, I took the tubs out that were in there, the steel tub. I took those out. I fixed the suspension in the front. I still haven't replaced. Um, you see the tie rods need to be replaced. The lower ball joint needs to be replaced. So those things I will, um, when I buy those, I will do a repair and video for you guys to see how that's done. Um, you've probably seen them at another channel, but here I'm gonna show it to you guys again and I'm gonna go more into detail. Also, let me see. On this truck, when I got it, uh, I changed the, I recently just changed the master cylinder, brake master cylinder, cause that was out. It wasn't getting any pressure so it wasn't going into gear and then i changed the i changed the shift tower so that's new shift tower uh, changed um everything else is just uh, minor stuff i gotta get some clips for the doorknob i get this filler strip that goes down here on the entryway to the door but otherwise it's pretty clean i got plenty of stereos that i could just pop in there i didn't want to put in right now because uh, i'm not really driving it um later on i, I have to do some exhaust work too. It seems like it has an exhaust leak. So I gotta figure out if that's gonna be cool and see if um, if I get any check engine lights. Cause I'm always pulling the battery. I'm gonna have a check engine light cause I always pull the battery and by the time the computer doesn't have time to uh, to uh, go through the, the uh, through the file. So 
Now, if you guys don't know, I mean, I smog a vehicle from 99 to 06 and some other vehicles, but this particular truck and from that year, um, these motors, you have to go through a checklist. So the computer goes through a checklist and it, it it's the way you drive it. Uh, you go on the freeway, the amount of miles that you drive on, on your, your um, just your, you know, regular roads that you go back and forth in, uh, residential streets and stuff like that. So the truck or car knows, that motor knows, the speed limits that you're going and it has to go through a checklist and stops and goes and how many stops and what the way it performs and when it gets on the free, freeway the miles that it goes through. If you go through the checklist you have to go through. Um, after that then it'll let you know if it has a check engine light or not. If it has a check engine light then it's got to be something else that's popping up that either needs to be fixed or replaced. <clears throat> um, also, let me see what else. The rear since they did the four link. See what they did here. So they put those springs, they got rid of the bags. And there's a hose right there on the top. And they put those springs there. So now it's just bouncing around. Um, what I wanna do is a coil over in the back, which I'm gonna see what I can do and get that done. Probably need like a cross member or something, something to go from end to end to do the coilovers. And I might have to cut this bed open a little bit more. This bed I'm probably not gonna keep, especially if I go with the step side. Um, so it does have the four link. And for now, I think what I'm gonna do is get put the um, the leafs back on and do a flip kit to drive it around. I'll do a flip kit and remove the four link for now and just do a foot kit with the with the leafs later on i can figure out if those the, if that uh, four link is going to work what i need it to do because i want to put coilovers in the rear end um so that's what i'm thinking so far and then but i gotta see if it's gonna work uh for the suspension on the rear i gotta figure some things out on the back still so um, basically I need to get that riding right because the front is not bouncing around the way it was before the back is so I need to get that taken care of and then after I get that taken care of um, it'd be the smog and get it legally registered took care of the take care of the smog after I take care of the smog then she should be ready to drive around and then the cosmetic stuff I can take care of it more um, I had bought the 05 bumper already, so that is the reason why I took, I had the parts. So I wanted to go ahead and put it on because I didn't like that front end. And it's just to motivate me and put the lights on there, so, you know, the looks of it and motivate me to, to keep going and pushing forward to get it running. But I'm just going to get this running and basically just use it as a daily for now. And just clean it up a little bit more and then little by little working on issues on it like body work and stuff like that okay guys so i know this is a little bit of a long video but it's just an update on the daily vehicle on the obs truck um i kind of stopped on that for now because i'm getting more closer to upgrades and paint work and things that are going to cost more money um so i got to figure out what I got to pay for first and basically I want to take care of this one so I can get it on the road and as soon as I get it on the road and registered I can be able to park it on my out in the street um it moves and runs but I need to get it right so that um, I can use it as a daily and then little by little work on it um the OBS pretty much is never going to be legally driven because I'm in California so I can't legally drive it on the road the way it sits and I'm not gonna go through all the paperwork and whatnot basically it's it's gonna it's a burnout truck and so it's gonna stay a burnout truck um, and it'll get towed like I said before so yeah that's where I'm at right now guys um, I'll get back with you guys um, some more of things that I do that I'm working on uh, sorry I didn't finish on the video on the front end suspension 
but I am going to get back to the front end suspension. So I will drop another video for that. We'll get more into detail and actually buying the, the parts and replacing them because I didn't want to make the video. I, sh I showed some of the video of it, but I didn't show you guys after um, when it was put back together. But I'll do that later on a video where I've replaced some of more of the parts like the uh, the low ball, the low, um, the lower ball joints and the tie rods. And I think that's about it. New shocks, we get new shocks on it, but I mean, it's, it's doing pretty good. It's sturdy. It's not, um, see, it's more stiff as you can see. It's not all bouncing around like the way it was. The front was like the back. So I can, I'll show you the back. It's not even a lot of pressure. See, like, yeah. See, so that's bouncing around. Yeah, I can get that taken care of. So that's about it, guys. All right. Um, sorry, it's nothing for me to actually teach you guys on this video, but it was just an update um, to see, you know, just you guys understand what's going on. We got a little slow right now right now what's going on uh today's halloween so happy halloween to all you guys um i believe uh summit is going uh, uh the um uh, not summit uh, uh what is it called uh, man i have brain fart right now <laughs> um they're having the the sema show that's what i wanted to get out the sema show so right now at this moment they're having the sema show and it sucks because I can't be out there. I really wish my truck was out ready so that I can go to something like that or get further along to get invited to something like that. But anyways, eventually I'll get there, guys. Um, and this is good because you guys know exactly where I'm at right now. And then hopefully one day I will get to that point where I take my truck to a couple of car shows. Um, I'm hoping to meet these guys eventually soon. Uh, shout out to um, the setup in Houston and shout out to Project Torque. Shout out to On The Gas. Those guys are killing it uh, on Project Torque is killing as well. Um, I'm not into the racing, the racing scene, but I love the content they have and um, the burnout trucks. And I basically want to just want to get into that and join into the fun and get in there and shout out to Ishmael that dude he's here he's here in Cali from LA uh, hopefully I'm gonna get with him soon and uh, meet up and just have some fun but anyways guys this is more just showing you guys where I'm at and what's going on with the GMC and um, step by step I'll get there but alright guys comment like and subscribe uh, you new guys, or you guys are going to be my, my first guys that are first subscribers. Those of you guys going to be my um, guys that uh, follow me, hopefully for a long, long time. But anyways, I'm going to do something for my first viewers, my, my diehard guys that are following me. I'm going to do a special giveaway for, for those guys as well. But alright guys, comment, like, subscribe. Thank you. Hit the uh, bell notification as well. You guys have a good one. And uh, happy Halloween.